back, everybody. I am Jason Wersma. That is Michael Stansford. This is Tankers Fantasy Football. And we are going to bust down some wide receiver rankings for your ass right now. We're getting the top 25 wide receivers. We're going to lead it off with Antonio Brown. I mean, Antonio Brown, I mean, we're talking about first round picks. He might be the safest first round pick there is. I mean, my God, he's just a, he's a machine. The man is a machine out there. How does he do what he does? It's completely ridiculous. 101 receptions, over 1,500 yards, in only 14 games. Insane. Almost 100 more yards than the, than the next closest receiver on the season. Just just outrageous. He's a, he's a dynamo, man. It's ridiculous. He, besides the game he got injured, he only had two games under 11.2 PPR points. And we're talking about this is the crazy part. You're talking about he played 14 games. In eight of those 14 games, he had 24 PPR points or better. Six games with 10 or more receptions. <laughs> I mean, my fucking lord, that is insane fucking level shit. Six games with 10 or more receptions? That is insanity, people. Number two, we're going to have to give it to DeAndre Hopkins, who after the Brock Osweiler experiment, he has resurrected himself as an elite NFL receiver, and I think he's easily a number two PPR guy going into this season. I love it. I love it. DeAndre Hopkins on the cross on the third day. He rose again. He might actually see 20 touchdowns this season. I think that's in the, in the realm of possibility for him if all things go right. I mean, he had the 96 receptions. He had almost the 1,400 yards at 1,378. He had the 13 touchdowns. He only had one game less than four receptions. <laughs> and he only had two games under eight targets. So this guy is a ball hawk. They are hucking it, chucking it to him. Even when Watson went down, he still continued to produce because the guy throwing him the ball wasn't named Brock Osweiler. <laughs> and, I mean, this guy is all studly. This is a, another safe first-round pick out there. I mean, receivers I always view as more safer picks. Well, running backs are thinner, so you sure. feel like you got to get up on that shit. But if you're feeling strong about some late-round running backs, receiver in the first round is always a pretty safe play. Absolutely. I mean, you're just talking about guys that are just going to go out there and do what they do week after week after week. I mean, my God, I think the top probably four or five guys we're looking at could be kind of considered in that same same sort of category. Maybe not your elite like Antonio Brown or DeAndre, but just in terms of being safe on a week-to-week -week basis they are out there making it happen awesome we're gonna go ahead we're gonna give the nod to obj odell beckham jr at the three hole because of his talent because i think that offense has gotten better i think eli is gonna somehow resurrect his ass out there we might see once again eli get into that four thousand yard 30 touchdown range like he was doing for the last three or four years before he just actually sucked it up last year but he did a lot of that sucking it up without Odell Beckham Jr. on the field. Absolutely and you look at everything that they've done around around them on that team they strengthen the offensive line. You've got Sterling Shepard, we've got Evan Ingram, we have Saquon Barkley at running back. You, I mean you have to think the stars are kind of aligning in New York to some extent. I mean, who knows? With that supporting cast, he might see a little more single coverage out there. And if that's the case, if he ever sees single coverage, you know Eli's just fucking <laughs> eyes glued on him. And he's going to huck and chuck him the ball. Throw it at him. We're four. We're going to go ahead and give it to Michael Thomas. Love it. Michael Thomas, this was his third year as a Saint. I think this is all in. I mean, the guy had 104 receptions last year for 1,244 yards. <laughs> I mean, a little bit hurting on the five touchdowns, but I think that's got nowhere to go but up. Yeah, absolutely. And again, in that offense, man, I mean, my God, just what they do is, they, it's just numbers, man. I mean, they, went, they even ran the ball more than the Saints have ever run the ball with Drew Brees as their quarterback. <laughs> right. And this guy still had 104 receptions. So, I mean, all in. I think the receptions are still going to be there. I think the yards are still going to be there. And I think he can get in there. I mean, this is a guy that could get you 10 touchdowns. Well, I think so. the, 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 the opportunity is definitely going to be there for him this year. And I think, too, we kind of saw it last year. He's playing with, he played with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, you know. Felt somewhat disrespected not being considered a sort, sort of a top guy, I think. And that, that showed through in some games. He's fighting for balls. He's fighting for yards. 
Give it to Michael Thomas, baby. I mean, he had the elite, the elite receiver numbers last year. Only one game PPR under 9.5. He had only two games under five receptions on the season. And he only had and he only had two games where he didn't have at least eight targets. So like like the Hopkinsons and like the Antonio Browns, this guy is the the vocal point of their offense, Absolutely. and he is going to be getting every opportunity to do it to do his job. Love me some Michael Thomas, man. We gave Michael Thomas a nod over Julio Jones. We're going to go ahead and give Julio Jones here at number five. I think he's still a top five guy. I do too. I do too. I do too. The, the touchdowns last year were just dog shit. You know, the three touchdowns. He dropped that one easy touchdown that was an over-the-shoulder catch, wide ass open. I mean, but you look at this, and you're still looking at 88 receptions for over 1,400 yards. Man, man. just. I mean, the thing is, you know, you look at he never really loved you sexy too much no. the season because he only had the fucking, what, the three games over 20 PPR points, and the one was a 50-burger, so that's, like, really weighing his stat line quite a bit, making it look more sexy Absolutely. than maybe it was. But you cannot deny this 88 reception for 1,444 yards. And he, he's, a, again, he's a guy that just goes out there and he does what he does. I mean, he's had some sort of nagging kind of injuries, you know, here and there throughout the years, some recurring foot problems. But he, he you know, his stat line reminds me of a, another uh, kind of dark horse favorite uh, bars uh, back in the day, some Andre Johnson once upon a time. I mean, these are he's just like a reception yard hero out there. I mean, you're talking about 15-point guy most. He's getting you that. He is the lord of six for 90. <laughs> the lord. The absolute lord of six for 90. But, I mean, I know that's not really loving you sexy. Like I said, with only the three games over 20 uh, PPR points, that's not really elite wide receiver territory. But, I mean, my goodness, I think he will get those touchdowns back into that 7, 8, 9 range. And if these yards and catches are still there, I mean, he's easily a top five PPR guy. Well, I think, too, you know, Julio's Julio can kind of offer that somewhat stable floor with just the potential for, the, you know, the sky, basically, oh, yeah. any given week. And, you know, we're talking about redraft here. I know he's getting a little bit more longer in the tooth. He's, he's getting close to that big 30 number. But, yeah. I mean, all in on the redraft thing, this guy's easily still a top five PPR receiver. I'm going to give the nod next pick here. We had, I don't think Devontae Adams ever had his ass a thousand yard season, but I mean, the touchdowns have been there for him, even with the likes of uh, uh, Brett Hundley played out a, there. Played a piss Brett Hundley My out there. God. I, he's still getting it done. He went out there. What did he get to? 74 for 885 and 10 touchdowns last season. I, I think those numbers got nowhere to go but up. I think he's going to be into that 90 reception guy range. I think he can get his ass into that 11, 1,200 yards. And if these touchdowns remain the same, we're looking at very elite production. Absolutely. For a guy that, that you know, is kind of undervalued, I think, in some circles right now. It's interesting out there to see Aaron Rodgers' main target you know, not making some of these lists out here. I mean, Jimmy Graham might be stealing some touchdowns, but so is Jordy, and Jordy's out of town. Right. So, I mean, it's kind of, you know, tit for tat out there. I think so. I think so. You know, I think, I think Devontae, if on the field, I think you can write him down for the 10 to 12 touchdowns, and if these yards and uh, y yards and catches go up just a tick, I mean, we're looking at very elite, sexy, deluxe production. A.J. Green here at number seven. I mean, you know, no really surprise no, with no. the A.J. Green, but this is this is ranked a little bit higher than I've seen I've seen yeah. him go on a lot of uh, those PPR mock drafts. His average draft position is more toward that end of the second in these 12-team okay. leagues, and I got him ranked about early second, middle of the third with this. I'm um, uh, early second, er, middle middle second out there with this ranking, but I mean. AJ Green is just still the guy, the guy mole. I mean, the, for for a, for a guy who has spent his career, his career playing with Andy freaking Dalton, who might who might be the prime meridian of starting quarterbacks in the NFL. <laughs> you know, the things that AJ Green can do are just just amazing. He's again a guy you, you just throw the ball at him, man. Just throw the ball at him. He'll catch it. It's just, you know, you, you look at it, like, like we said with Julio, you look at this guy, he's like, oh, he had a down year. Then you look at it, and it's like 75 for 1,108 touchdowns, and you're like, I mean, That's maybe, a down year? Maybe, <laughs> it might be a down year for a guy that a guy of the sexy caliber of A.J. Green, but, I mean, I'm saying these numbers are, these numbers at this point, I'm saying are his floor. I love it. I love it. And, and again, A.J. Green's just a guy that that offense more or less has to flow through, I think, to, to really be – 
at its maximum. They got to get Joe building. Mixon going, and they got to get AJ Green the football. Right. That's all these Bengals. That's, yeah. the Bing, that's what the Bengals got to hope to do. Yeah. Getting Joe Mixon going is going to help AJ Green. I feel that. We're going to go target vacuum here for the number eight. We're going to give it to Keenan Allen of the Chargers. Love watching Keenan Allen play. It's ridiculous. Love watching I had him, I had him, I had him written off coming out of all these injuries. All these seasons. He played like, what, two quarters of football <laughs> in 2016? You basically got yep. this guy written off. He hasn't really been on the field doing anything for like upwards of a year and a half, two yeah. years, and he just comes back on the field. You see it. And he's like, it all, like it always was. Yeah, and you see him come together. He put, he, I mean, he puts it all together for a 102, 13, 93, and six touchdowns. I mean, that's Keenan sexy. Allen. Jeez, Keenan lots. Allen. And he's a guy, too, you could you could look at his stat stat line for three quarters of the game's going to be, you know, one for 12, and you tune back in the middle of the fourth quarter, and he's blowing up for, you know, six or seven for... 80, 90, maybe a tutty, maybe a little more. It's, I mean, it's ridiculous. We're talking about how he's a target vacuum. We're talking about nine games with 10 or more targets. We're talking seven games, 100 man, yards or better. Man. And we're talking only one game under four receptions. So, I mean, this guy is a target beast. He is a consistent uh, consistent football player. I think if you want a safe pick, I mean, barring another one of his freakish injuries, but, I mean, I think he may have turned the page on that. That might be behind him now, and I think this might be a very safe mid to late second-round pick. And, and, again, for a guy that caught 102 passes last year, if, you know, you could snag him up at a reasonable price, I mean, Mike. God, you, you have to. You have to. Uh, I would like to add as a sidebar, too, with the recent news of Hunter Henry tearing his ACL. Yeah, we, we blew. OTAs earlier we were today. Toting the, we were toting the bandwagon, blowing the wheels, saying jump on. We think he's going to be the fourth best PPR tight end behind the likes of Gronk, Kelsey, and Ertz. And the fancy gods heard us. They poo-pooed all over the Hunter Henry Ooh, fucking hype train bandwagon. Struck him down, baby. And they I struck him down. I wouldn't be surprised if the Chargers dug up the remains and tried to reanimate Antonio Gates at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, did, I did just want to add, I think with Hunter Henry going down, perhaps Keenan gets a little more love from Phillip Rivers, you know. Something to maybe look at. He's the last man standing out there. <laughs> he fucking is. I mean, you know? There's a second year guy, Mike Williams, hanging out. Terrell Williams, uh, I think. Terrell I mean, Williams is. And I mean, who else they got? Who's that one guy? Tra- Travis Benjamin? Oh, baby. He's just a guy. He's just like a deep threat. He's a, he's a role bum. player. He's a bum. So I think Keenan <laughs> Allen is going to be the vacuum or the target vacuum once again. Love it. Bust into number nine. Another guy that had a disappointing year yeah. of where he was drafted last year. You know, he still was kind of he was kind of more of a wide receiver two than a wide receiver one like he was drafted. I'm talking about Mike Evans. Went out there and got you 71 for like just like a yard over a thousand, like was a thousand he? and one yards. Eked it out that last game of the season. Probably got some contract bonus oh, or something yeah. out of it. A little, a little party there. afterwards you know. for that thousand and one yard reception talking about measure it again. <laughs> <laughs> I demand a recount. <laughs> uh, we got five touchdowns. I mean, you know, the guy was still getting it done. He only had three games under the eight targets. He only had four games under five receptions, you know. But the problem is, you look at him, he only had one fucking 100 yard game. It's just dark. I mean, considering how much that offense was talked about. I think up Hard Knocks season, is the curse. I kind of do, too. Is it the new Madden, baby? I think Hard Knocks is the bad news curse. You know, you get everybody all hyped up for this team, and it's like, it's so hyped, it's got nowhere to go but to let you down. Right. Oh, we've got the muscle hamster returning to form, and we got D-Jax in town. James Winston was giving me hope. He was talking about how he used to piss off front porches. I'm a, piss, <laughs> I'm a type of guy that likes to piss off some porches, so I was like, that's time. not... That's my fucking boy. He went out there and just fucking threw, completely let me down, bud. It's terrible, man. Terrible. But I, I will say, I do like cut of Mike, Mike Evans' jib out there, and I think if there's one guy that's going to get some love in Tampa Bay, it's, yeah, he it's can Mike, turn it around. What guy Mike can Evans. turn it around and keep and get back into his back end wide receiver one stats? I think it's Mike Evans. Number 10, we're going to go with the speedster. We're going to give it to Tyreek Hill, which is kind of an iffy thing now that Sammy Watkins is fucking around down there. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a chance that that offense is a lot more fun to watch this year. Yeah, I think it might be a lot more colorful out there. Yeah, like even if, Pat, 
they're not necessarily. They might not be more effective than the win loss column, but I think they're going to be. Alex fun Smith's to watch always going to bore me. He's he's safe. I'm interested to see what this Mahomes can do, baby. People are thinking he's the fucking next guy, Mo. I mean, I haven't really seen much about him, but if Andy Reid believes, I mean, all in. I think Andy Reid knows. Big Red knows. He's he seen fucking some knows. stuff. He's seen some things, man. He fucking does know. Big Red knows. I'd trust in Andy Reid of his knowledge. You say Alex Smith, let him walk. We got our boy. I think he's right, baby. I think they got their boy out there. You know, Tyreek Hill, you got a guy, 75 catches last season, almost 1,200 yards, seven touchdowns. I feel that he kind of left some of that on the field. I feel there was some opportunity for some. He was kind of there. a boomer bust player, you know, because you look at it definitely. and he had four games over 20 fantasy points, you know, PPR, and you're like, that's, you know, that's fairly solid, pretty good action. But you look at those games after he scored big time for you with the over 20 points, and the games after it, he was only averaging eight PPR points in the game, Oof. the games directly after Oof. his good, sexy game. So he's kind Oof. of a then and now kind of player, yeah. you know? That's kind of yeah. dark. It's a bit of a So deviation. if he blows it up for you this week, don't feel too bad about benching the week after. You know what I'm saying? That's how you get over on motherfuckers. It's like, right. how'd you bench that guy? Right. I just scored you 25. Well, he's going to score eight. Because I watch Dakers fantasy football. I tell you about that. Shameless club. <laughs> All fucking in. Number 11, back in that ass. He won't die. He, won't he die. is invincible. He is forever. We're going to give it to Larry Fitzgerald. And this, I mean, my goodness, you just think, like, they're talking about three, four years ago, I like, stick a fork in him, you know, I think he's done, and this motherfucker goes out there and blasts your ass for 109 catches for 1,156 yards and six touchdowns. Oof. And I think those touchdowns can even go back up. I do, too. I do, too, man. He got stuffed multiple times at the goal line last year. I mean, I mean, man. David. I mean, David Johnson. You know, I mean, that's he, Larry Fitzgerald was all the Cardinals had last year, and he was still out there raking it. Just, just get it. that attention off him a little just bit. I mean, it. Mike. I don't know if he'll be able to do the 109 receptions, but I think those yards will be there, and I think he can get those touchdowns mm-hmm. back up into that eight or nine range. And we're talking about it. I mean, he finished like what the fourth best PPR wide fucking wide receiver last year. He may have even pushed for number two. I think he was fourth. Though. I think he was the fourth PPR receiver. It was Points ridiculous, perhaps, man. You know, and two something about Arizona. I mean, he was doing that with downtown John Brown. You know, kind of riding the pine out there. They've got they had Jerron Brown. Jerron Brown. I think he's still there, but um, you know, they ship. They ship Michael Floyd out of town. They've got they've got this young guy and uh, Chad Williams, I believe, is his name. Uh, perhaps could offer somewhat of a steady presence in that number two spot. Might help old Larry Fitz out in the slot. When you look at it, you're talking. You know, he got it done. He's six games over twenty one point three PPR points. So sexy. I mean, that's out there so fucking grinding. And in a year where wide receivers had kind of like a down year as far as like top ten wide receiver yeah. production, like three hundred PPR point. Wide receivers had a really down year for you, but Fitzgerald toted that rock, and he's still not getting any respect. He's going like mid to late fourth round out there. If you can scoop up and Larry Fitzgerald as your wide receiver two in the Jesus. mid to late fourth round, Jesus I'm Christ. all fucking in. I mean, we're talking about redraft here, people. We're talking about redraft. We're talking about taking home titles. We're talking about winning money. Right. And let them fucking giggle at you when you draft the Larry Fitzgerald. And they'll fucking know what's up come week four and five when he's in there pushing their fucking shit in. <laughs> <laughs> All Larry right. fucking legend, baby. We're going to bust it down with one more. And then we're going to go to a part two like we did with the running backs this year. I mean, last time to keep the fucking, you know, keep the videos a little under 20 minutes. Keep it fresh. And keep it know? sexy for you, you know. We're going to get some Allen Robinson. We're going to give the nod to the Bear. We're going to go Homer City. We're going to think that I think the targets are going to be there, baby. If Allen can stay on the field, I think this new coaching staff is going to breathe some life into the biscuit out there. And he's going to be hucking, chucking at football. I I think he might. I mean, I don't think he's going to get back to that when he had that, what was it, 2015, was it? Yeah, he went for, what, 1,400 and It was 80 for 1,414 touchdowns. Woo! You know, we'll take it down a little bit. But I think he's still going to get that 80. I think it's going to be more like 1,200 and like 10 touchdowns, which is pretty fucking solid. That's back end uh, wide receiver one numbers, big. Well, I'll tell you, if, 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 he, can, if he can get even, even in, in that kind of ballpark, too, for the, for the Bears, for getting a free agent wide receiver, that's a sexy pickup, Bears. I love it this year. 
They've made some nice aggressive moves Let's in free do it, agency. Bears. Why not? You know, you're surrounding your boy out there with talent. They're saying, we believe in Mitch Trubisky. Let's get him some weapons. We're going to fucking all in with some Anthony Miller. We got some fucking the quick man. We got some Taylor love Gabriel love from it. Atlanta. We got my boy Trey Burton from the Eagles. And Trey Burton, motherfucking, looks like a playmaking tight end. Shaheen Sounds might there. have to take a back seat for a while. Bears. I mean, Shaheen pans around. Who knows? Maybe we're going to be the... Maybe we're going to be the uh, two tight end set bears out there, baby. And I'm in love Ooh, with it. that could be the sex, the though, The two man. tight end bears. I think Allen Robinson is going to get a fuck ton of red zone like looks. It. I think he's going to get every opportunity to get it like sexy. It. And I like this uh, 12th overall ranking for the A-Rob. I think that's pretty safe for him, man. I like him there. I like him there. Saying we believe in you, but here you are. Yeah, you are, baby. <laughs> I'm going to give you just the Nani's 12 teams. We're going to go the last wide receiver one. We're going to give it to the Bears. All right, people. Check us out. Go to check out the part two. If you fucking like the yeah. cut of our jib, give us a subscribe. Give us a yeah. share, you know. Quit being selfish. Tell your fucking league mates your about the Tankers Fantasy Football. And we will get back at you. At me, baby. At me on that Twitter, baby. You don't like the cut of my jib? Tell me what the fuck's up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Send me an at. All right. Uh.